Hello everyone. In this uh, session, I am going to look at uh, the decision trees for ordinal response variable. So, till now, we have looked at uh, decision trees where the response variable was uh, a categorical variable, basically a nominal. Within that, again, there could be two categories or more than two categories. So, we have looked at different decision trees for different such kind of purposes. Then, the response variable was a numerical variable where we have used different forms of regression there. Then, we have also looked at the cases where the decision variable is a count variable the Poisson regression and uh, the Poisson decision variable, etc. Then we have also looked at the decision variable where the response variable is time to event, where we talk about the survival kind of stuff. Now here, my objective is to look at the decision variables which are ordinal in nature. So they are ordered low, medium, high poor, average, good or even it could be a rating 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest. So all these are typically the ordinal response variables. So if at all I have any ordinal response variable, I want to look at how I can build the decision tree for that. So this is where I have only one single model to talk of here. Uh, uh, as far as the R implementation is concerned and the data set that I am considering also is the same data set that I have used for the count data which is that hospital related data set. The only thing is now I will change the question a little bit. Right? Let me uh, go back to that hospital data set which I have already loaded because it's a continuation of the class that I have taken for the count data. Right, just for a quick recollecting, if I am looking at head of HOSP, so this is what it is. Right, the doc visits was something that we have uh, taken as the response variable in the count data where I wanted to model the number of doctor visits based on various other variables other uh, explanatory variables or other attributes. Now, I have, uh, uh, I will change the model, right? So, I am more interested in, uh, let's say chronic condition. Let me look at the summary of all of them so that I will change the question a little bit. So, here my summary is saying, Okay, health status, average, excellent, poor. Rather than that, okay, number of chronic conditions are anywhere between 0 to 8. Right? So, I will take this as my response variable. But of course, this has to be ordinal. So, this is where I will convert this into a factor. Right, because I want this as an ordinal variable. Right, as I want this as an ordinal uh, variable, uh, I'll consider this chronic conditions as an ordinal variable. I'll see if I can estimate the number of chronic conditions for a particular person based on all other variables that based on the number of doctor visits he makes, based on the number of you know, emergencies he had till now, based on the number of uh, hospital stays he had done till now, based on his health status, age, gender, marital status, etc. I want to check what would be the number of chronic conditions he has. Or probably I can think of uh, the health status itself Right, but let me uh, just take it, uh, chronic conditions, let me uh, take it as an ordinal variable, but it doesn't look like that because chronic condition, I can still take it as a count variable. So, I don't want to get into that, but let me create this one, health status itself, 
poor i will convert it into 1 right average i will take it as 2 and excellent i will take it as 3 right so i'll call it has dollar health underscore status i'll set it as if else if else has dollar health underscore status right is equal to poor i'll call it as 1 if else again has dollar health underscore status is equal to average i'll call it as 2 else i'll call it as 3 so i have simply converted them into 1 2 3 Okay, I have to put double equal to. Right, so half under cost dollar health status now is one, two, three. So that makes it an ordinal variable. Right, I can very well uh, look at the. i can very well uh, call the levels of hospital dollar health status so first of all i have to convert it into a factor class let me just check what is the class of hospital dollar health status i think it should be showing numeric so what i'll do is hospital dollar health status i'll call it as as dot factor i'll convert it into a factor right so now i'll set the levels of hasp dollar health status i will set them as the first one i'll call it as poor the next one i'll call it average and the third one i'll call it excellent right now let's see the summary of hasp if i look at the summary of hasp yes poor average excellent these are the numbers fair enough now my data is there in place now this conditional inference ordinal response tree actually goes with a package party and i'll be using the c tree function out here so let me load the package party for this purpose Okay, it's already loaded because we have used it even in the count case. Now the way the model is built is using the C tree function. Z is the response variable, which is an ordered factor. We have already ordered it. We have three classes: one, two, three. It's an ordered factor. Let's look at the class of the hospital health status. It's a factor, so it's an ordered factor, right? I need to give that as an input. data is the data set of attributes that are used to build the tree i think all these things are already taken care of we have loaded the party package we have got the data for which the decision tree needs to be built preliminary inspections are done if at all some level of transformations are required we have to perform those things the response variable needs to be an ordinal variable we already have taken care of that we have to split the data into training data and the testing data right so i think even that is taken care of all uh, right but but it's better because we have changed the data a little bit so let me say how many rows are there n row of hasp which tells me there are 1000 uh, 4406 rows Out of that, I want to take approximately 70% of the data, giving me 3,084. So the train is a variable, right? It's better that I set a seed, set dot seed thousand. So the train is a variable that I am creating, where I am taking a sample from one to n, 
3084 uh, numbers randomly I'm trying to generate between 1 and 4406 where the replace I'm setting it is as false so not no no duplication coming in terms of the values so based on that I'm creating my training data which is a subset of the hospital where I'm taking the rows which are there as a part of the trade and I'm taking all the columns and test data also I'm again taking a subset of hospital where I don't include the train data minus train but I take all the columns so with this I have my training data and testing data in front of me now I have to estimate the model right so let me take fit C3 for this so uh, fit c3 is the name of the variable where I will be storing the model. I will use the function c3. My dependent variable here is I am looking at the health status if I can assess the health status of the person based on all the other things. So I will take a dot based on all other things I want to see if I can assess the health status of the person. Then the data for which I am working out is the hospital, uh, sorry, train data. I am taking the train data as the input and based on this I am trying to do a fitting of the C3. Now let me see what is the kind of advantage that this C3 is giving to me. Let me see what is this C tree doing for me. Wow, it's a big tree that is built in my case. Chronic conditions less than or equal to 3. Now if you see what are the inputs that it is giving. Based on all these inputs it's saying that chronic conditions less than or equal to 3. That's one kind of a breakup that it has given. Then again chronic conditions greater than 1. So within less than or equal to 3. Again, there is a breakup of less than or equal to 1 and greater than 1. So, these are the two bifurcations that came out versus chronic conditions greater than 3. So, that's how the whole thing, if the chronic conditions are greater than 3, then again one more breakup that came out is hospital stays less than or equal to 2 versus greater than 2. When it is greater than 2, that became a kind of a leap node altogether. But in less than or equal to 2, some of the employed came into picture. Employed versus unemployed, I think, has made a difference in terms of uh, talking about the average health status of the person. So the health status of the person uh, could be assessed based on the chronic conditions and a lot of other things. And if I really want to do a plotting of this particular model, fit c3 this plot has given me a very complex plot right very detailed very complex so this is where we may have to sometimes prune the tree if required right there's a very complex model that came out here number of doctor visits medicaid lot of things that are coming up as a part of the assessment of the tree so we have plotted the model then you will get the number of observations at each of the node and significant and insignificant. Wherever the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we can very well make out that the split that has been performed is very, very significant. Whereas when the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we can say that the split is not significant. And the terminal nodes contain the distribution of the response variable. So here the terminal, uh, there are so many terminal nodes, that's where the graph is not looking that interesting. So, but uh, at, the dis at the terminal variables, you see the distribution of the response variable. Now I can very well test out this model on the testing data. That is a much, much simpler mechanism for us to assess the overall performance of the model. So once we have plotted it, it's better that I get into the prediction part of it, right? And uh, once uh, the prediction is being done, I can very well assess the goodness of it. So I'll use the prediction. So I'll say pred C tree, whatever my model has come out, 
I'll say pred C3 is nothing but I'm doing a predict. My model I'm using is fit C3 and I have a test data for fit. So if you look at what is coming out of this spread C3, so for all of them there is a classification on average for excellent kind of stuff. I hardly see any kind of excellence coming out of the model. Majority of them are average, very few of them are being displayed as uh, as uh, poor. Probably if I look at uh, the table just for getting a hold table on pred c3 i'm getting a result saying 16 of them are poor 13 of 1306 of them are average and the remaining are coming under excellent from the test data so i can very well go into the process of tabling Right, I'll take both the uh, actuals versus the predicted. So let me say pred C3 is one category, which is the predicted values, and actual is coming from test data dollar health underscore status, which is giving me a confusion matrix 71055. These are all the accurate. So out of the total, 1322 it looks like 7 plus 1055 divided by 1322 are talking about the level of accuracy so 80 percent accuracy is the model which means around approximately 20 percent of them are not predicted properly so <coughs> going with this model, I can very well assess the health status of the person, whether he would be falling into average category or excellent or poor, but the goodness of it of this model is around 80%, 20% is subjected to error. So that's how I can very well create an ordin conditional inference, ordinal response tree. And based on that, I can very well uh, make out the accuracy of the model and error rate present as a part of the model. So, if your output is having some kind of ordinal values, this could be a mechanism that you can quite comfortably use to bring out the decision tree and finally uh, estimate the ordinal variable by taking the values of the various attributes. Right? So that's only, this is the only one model where I wanted to look at the ordinal uh, uh, response variable. If you have any further queries regarding this, you can very well get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that I have provided below or you can send in an email at wamsidhar at the rate of peacegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.